B for next mechanics, and on today's video, I don't have a finished product to show you. Instead, I'm going to be showing you the techniques I learned to create my first ever foam helmet. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to be making the entire suit. It's quite an ambitious project, seeing as I've never done anything like this before, but it's also going to be a very cool one. Now don't worry, this project isn't going to completely swamp this channel, it's going to be a series that I work on every other week. So one of the reasons I do this channel is an excuse to learn new skills. I've done laser cutting chests, I've made handcrafted dioramas, but I've never made my own templates. Now, despite never making any, I did have an idea how to go about this. See, one day when I was scrolling through my YouTube, I found a video by Netherlab Games, and what they were doing was a tutorial on how to use a computer software called Blender, which I use pretty decently, to create these paper templates. What the tutorial was showing was an inbuilt feature of Blender where you have to turn any 3D model, a toy car, a plant feeder, anything into paper templates that were flat and ready to be printed, just bam, done on your printer. Sounds a little too perfect, right? Yeah. See, the computer tries its best to automatically make cuts for you when it goes to print it out. But when you're working with models with more and more edges, more and more bits that need cuts, it just starts making this garbled mess. So you have to go in there yourself and manually make these cuts. When you're working on high level models, it can take some time. So for my first test, I used just the simple basic Blender Cube. Now, it was quite basic, it's literally just a square, but it helped me understand how to use the software, how to use cuts and where to put the cuts, and also I was able to correctly scale it. Because you see, Blender normally will try and make things big because it's easier to model like that, but if you do it deliberately, you can choose the scale. And I managed to figure it out. Now, I'm not building this suit out of cubes. I mean, I could, but that's not really what I'm going for here. So I need to find an Iron Man model. Now, the best place to find models I found is Thingiverse. It's a open website that everyone can just use and upload to. You can just download it for free and everything. So I managed to find one of Iron Man. Now, the Iron Man model that I downloaded was actually a toy one. So learning how to scale up and down the cube earlier really paid off. Now because the Iron Man was just a toy one, it was fairly low poly. Now, what do I mean by low poly? Well basically, it means it's a more simple model. Higher poly models have more shapes, more edges, more points everywhere, and requires more computing power. So having a low poly one is easier to turn into templates. And any of the detail that I would have lost, I can just paint it back on. I can do weathering and stuff, give it that texture. So with all that out of the way, I downloaded my model and I came face to face with my first problem. The parts weren't separated correctly. Like, they sort of were. The arm was a separate piece, the leg was a separate piece, but it wasn't forearm, shoulder, or anything like that. Like, you know, the helmet's like a faceplate and the head, they're all just sort of mushed together. So my first step was having to separate all of these. Now this was quite a time consuming process. Um, once I figured it out, it started getting quicker, but it still took quite a while. Just having to go over and figuring out where I want the seams to be, because some of it is fairly obvious. Like I said before, you can cut out the face from the helmet, but what do you do on bits like the chest where it's just plates on top of plates? It's a lot of finagling. You probably noticed that some of this footage, it's bright pink. Yeah. That's how I intend on painting it. Why do red and gold? Red and gold is boring. Give me pink. Now that I've converted enough of the 3D models into paper templates, it's time to get started on actually cutting them as paper. The computer, despite me making cuts, still did a couple things a bit weird. So I ended up printing it larger than I needed to at first. That was default how Blender had done it, just to get a feel for things. I thought if it's bigger pieces, it'd be easier to tape together, easier to see. As you can see, this is a lot bigger than how it should be. But that, like I said, that was fine. This is just me testing and experimenting. Okay, so now that I've done this big test, it's time to move on to the proper one. And this was a bit tricky. You see, I need to make it fit me digitally and normally people will just scan themselves, right? They'll use their phone or something and they can scan the face or whatever and get a full 3D model. I technically can do that with my phone, but I'd already devoted a lot of time learning how to use the Blender software in the paper template side that I couldn't go and learn the whole new thing and still get this video out on time. My compromise is that I measured myself so I knew my height, then I would get a picture of myself with the correct proportions, and yes, don't I look overjoyed. This is a great day. Then I got a generic human model and I started stretching him to fit my proportions while also being the correct height. Then I would fit the armor around that. So now that all of that's correctly scaled, it's time to print it out and cut it onto the foam. 
and this is my first ever venture into foam. foam. Foam is amazing. It fixes all the problems I've had previously with using cardboard in my cosplay. Don't get me wrong, I still like cardboard. I still use cardboard. In fact, I have a project planned soon that's going to use cardboard as its main thing. But it's very fragile in the sense of like, when you get it wet, it turns to mush. When you bend it, it's permanently deformed and it's easy to just mess up. You always have to do an extra layer of paper mache to keep its strength. You have to do all these extra steps. Foam? No, you don't. It still comes as a flat sheet that you cut templates onto. You can still use hot glue with it, which is what I use with cardboard. You're not supposed to use hot glue with foam, but you can. So all of my tools that I use with cardboard, scissors, knives, use that on foam. Still, like everything's basically the same, but better. I got to the stage where I was like, foam is just cardboard plus. It is premium cardboard. <laughs> Premium. Only trouble is, this is my first ever venture, so I had no idea what I was doing. Foam is still different to cardboard. It's bendy and squishy, and it's just slightly different. So my first ever venture didn't quite go so great. The hot glue didn't want to cooperate with me. It would dry either too quick or too slow. It was struggling to keep the foam bent in the correct shape while it was hardening. Some of the cuts weren't quite right, so the faceplate and the helmet didn't quite match up. And when I did finally finish it, something really awful happened. I discovered it's too small. I tried my best to like stretch it and make it fit or whatever, but as you can see, nah, I, I mean, I can't see. My eyes are like there. Eye holes are here, and when I do try to straighten it, it just compresses everything. My nose is like right up against it. It is not comfortable. It is not ideal. So, fortunately, I had to do this all over again. Except it wasn't unfortunate, because you know how at the end of both of my videos, I've had the whole, what would I do differently if I did it a second time? Well, this time I got to actually do it. So I did some research beforehand of how to use hot glue with foam, and I found a couple of really cool tricks. One thing you can do is you can squish the foam together in a certain way that means all the excess glue comes out the back, leaving you a nice clean front. And even if you do get blobs of glue on, you can actually get a scrap piece of foam, wrap it around your fingers and rub it, and it will actually reheat up the glue slightly, turning it sticky, and then it will just peel straight off. It's magic! This is why I call it Cardboard Plus. It just works! Premium! So I went in, and it was no time for round two. And I did all the techniques, I rubbed the excess foam, I managed to squish it correctly, I even cut it so that the faceplate and the helmet would actually line up for once. And then when all was said and done, it looked really good. Still needs a bit of tweaking, but it looks way better than the first one. And can I just point out, this is the first time I've ever made templates, and it looks like an Iron Man one that you would just find on any YouTube video, on any tutorial. I made this one. That is so freaking cool. Not only does this mean that I can do the rest of the Iron Man suit, this means that literally I can do any cosplay I want using 3D print files without needing to spend $300 on filament or whatever to print off the whole suit. This changes everything! Like I said before, this isn't a finished project. There's still a lot I want to do. I want to figure out how to make some sort of putty or something that will fill in the gaps and creases of the foam. I also want to make sure the cuts are a little bit clean around the eye holes. I need to paint it, obviously. Weather it, that's going to be fun. I mean, I'm not even finished making the back plate. Like, there's still a lot to do. But I think that this has turned out really well for first ever endeavor. And... I'm really loving this. I'm definitely going to carry on with the rest of the suit. And I think foam might be my new go-to now instead of cardboard, which is shocking because I've used cardboard for three years now. I mean, look at this. These, I, I have three Iron Man helmets now. One of them I made like three years back. Like, they all just blend in together. I kind of want a hall of armors now. Oh dear. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it maybe helped teach you some new techniques and shown that even if you know completely nothing about something, just having a go and trying your best 
you can get something that turns out pretty dang cool. Keep an eye out in the next coming weeks as I carry on building the rest of my suit. Next time, I have even more plans to share. Like, I might be trying to make it openable like the homecoming suit. You know how he just sort of steps out of it? That's on the cards. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, please remember to like and subscribe. No, I'm not done, thank you very much. Anyways, if you enjoyed this, then please remember to like and subscribe. I said, wait a minute. Alright, if you enjoyed this, then please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm a shouty man. Do you like creating cosplay out of cardboard, but you just find that it's not cutting it? Is it too bendy? Is it too easy to snap? Don't you wish there was something better than introducing Cardboard Plus? Cardboard Plus is like cardboard in every single way, but better. It still comes in that same recognizable flat sheet form ready for cutting, but this time, they come in unique colors to begin with. When you get them wet, they don't turn into a puddle. Cabo Plus will never let you down. It doesn't tear, it doesn't rip. This thing is built to last, folks.